Good morning, everybody. How the heck are y'all? Welcome to day 12 of the 2024 Challenge. Dr. Vaughn here, world-famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books, five journals, and um, I'm here to help you kick off your 2024. There's some key concepts. Welcome to the replay. If you're watching this on the replay, you can fast forward to about the five-minute mark. That's when I'll usually get started. Um, apologize for being a little bit late, but oddly, right before I was going to go live, Milani fell out of her stroller, <laughs> like the little walker, her little bumper walker. She felt she literally fell out of it. I don't know how she did it. My guess is she was reaching for something and just boop, right out of the seat. Good morning, Sarah Elizabeth. Yin Yang. Hello, Anna. Facebook user. Serena Levy. Levy or Levy? Good morning. Hope you guys are doing great. Gina G, what's up? Is that Gillis, Gina? Gina G or somebody else? Um, please hit the share and like button. We usually have uh, 100 people in here. We're currently at 27 on all the different platforms. Good morning, Brenda. Well, we say some hello. Stacy Ann is back. Some more beating. Bridget Diane Gruber. Good morning. Looking cute, Bridget. Very, very good. She's in my private group. Lori Morgan, the country singer. Is there Lori? Is there Lori Morgan, country singer? Yep, I was right. Gillis, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another Lori, watching from Oregon. How's it going? Thank you guys for sharing. Uh, sharing means caring. It's gonna be a short one today. Happy Friday, everybody. While we're waiting, not much in the news, just politics and stuff, and you know, stock market and things like that. Hope you guys are doing great. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for the likes. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, BJ. Uh, for those of you wanting to know about resellers, they had their initial meeting with the conservatorship uh, yesterday. This is a federal case. I don't, I'm not involved with resellers. I'm uh, in the company, but um, I know some people are stressed out about that, but uh, that's what it means when you're under receivership. Your offices are closed. Your employees have no place to work. Good morning, Lisa, Pula, Linda, uh, Runner Rom, Shane Sweet. What's up, Lisa Shepard? Now we're getting people in here. There we go, Rose Galen. But um, yeah, that's uh, they had their initial meeting yesterday. I haven't heard back what exactly happened. I'll let y'all know as soon as possible. But you're, you're, you're I mean, they're, the government's not going to come after you if you are if you signed up for, for resellers. You're protected. You should be protected anyway. I mean, their whole, the DOJ, their whole argument was that they were trying to protect the consumers. By consumers, I mean the people who signed up for the resellers program. So um, uh, other than, you know, having accounts go negative because they can't be serviced, it's kind of stressful for people. I get it. I understand. But I really don't know anything different than what you you guys know. But a um, few prayers that they, that the uh, conservator lets, uh, res lets the program, lets the company uh, service the accounts, which means take them out of negative, pay people what they're due, and then wind down. That would be the right thing to do, but you never know. This government's weird. So there you go. Um, uh, we are at the three-minute mark. So make sure you have your journal. 30 seconds is all you need. Um, I have new journals on my Amazon page, Curves to Confidence. This is one of them. I have five different ones. I have a cat-themed one, a dog-themed one. And all you're going to do every morning, challenge, right in here, I'm grateful and thankful for blank. I'm grateful and thankful for blank. Yeah. And um, cool, man. Thanks, Gonzo. I know. What's up? Yes, happy birthday, Steve Lloyd. I saw that. Happy birthday, man. man. Everyone give my buddy Steve Lloyd a follow. Do you want, do you want them to follow you on your uh, Facebook or your YouTube channel, Steve? Um, Steve is an awesome dude. He's multimillionaire. I'll just say it. A real estate investor turned his life around. I mean, now he lives on a fucking yacht in Sarasota, Florida, just dealing big, 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 big stuff, big deals. One of my friends, one of my mentors. Oh, a lot to Mr. Steve Lloyd helped me a lot through a lot. So kind hearted gentleman. All right, so I'm going to teach you how to have a great day. Let me summarize. Uh, you need a journal, gratitude journal. I'm grateful and thankful for blank. 
I'm grateful and thankful for Steve Lloyd. Follow him on Facebook, he says. And he loves to give kisses. Uh, grateful and thankful for the following. I'm grateful and thankful for technology. I'm grateful and thankful for Erica, uh, my family, my kids. I'm grateful and thankful for this house. And then what you want to do is you want to write it. Let's say you have a goal and your goal is to save $10,000 this year. You want to write it in the present tense, like you already have it. So I'm grateful and thankful that I have $10,000 in my bank account. And let's say you only currently have a thousand, but you want to write it the future as if you already have it. I'm grateful and thankful for the promotion, my new promotion. And you don't have it yet, but you write it like you already do. I'm grateful and thankful that my son is home safely from the military, for example. And it only takes you 30 seconds to journal. And then uh, the other day we talked about meditation. Yesterday we talked about meditation. And meditation is not stopping your thoughts. Meditation is just giving your monkey brain something to do. Just like you cannot stop your heart from beating, you cannot stop your kidneys from filtering. Your brain goal is to do, is to have thoughts. And so when you sit down to meditate, you just got to give your monkey brain something to do. And the simplest thing is to turn your attention to your breathing, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. That's all you have to do. You can YouTube it. Stay stand and meditate for the first time yesterday. Nice. I think uh, Dollar Tree is fantastic, man. This this one is from Walmart, this graph one. I love the graph paper from my math days. You know, I love graph paper. Um, $2. It used to be a dollar. And uh, so you want to give your monkey brain something to do. And when you have a thought, which you will have a thought while you're meditating, just let it go. Don't chase the next thought. Just let it go and, and return your attention to your breathing. That's all you have to do. Return your attention to your breathing. Um, the basis of these talks is that you've made the decision, right, to not be average. But not average if you have made the decision to not be average. Because you got to remember, Average in America means you're overweight, Steve Lloyd. <laughs> Hello, you man. Helped him lose. What did you lose? 60 pounds without surgery? Something like that, Steve. Um, average means being overweight. Yeah, he is. Melissa supporter. Awesome. I did it yesterday as well. That's awesome. Uh, average means being overweight. Two-thirds of Americans are overweight. Average means living paycheck to paycheck. The average American does not cannot handle a five hundred dollar emergency. Sixty uh, percent of uh, marriages end in divorce. So, eighty um, percent of Americans are disengaged in their jobs. So, and something like forty percent are actively trying to sink their business. It's pretty crazy. And so, the decision. You know, this whole 2024 challenge, you have to decide to not be average. And I'll tell you that most, you know, average people do not have goals. And if they do have goals, they have very shitty goals, very fuzzy goals, and very small goals. And we also talked about type A goals, type B goals, type C goals, not the bird, but the letter C, <laughs> C goals. And type A goals are things that you already know how to do. And they're not really goals at all because you already have it in your life. So for example, let's say you've lost 100 pounds and you wanna lose 50 more pounds. Or let's say you lost 150 pounds with your surgery and you regain 20 pounds and you go, I wanna lose my 20 pounds of regain. That's not a goal because you already have that in your life. You already have weight loss in your life. You already know how to lose weight. But Dr. V, if I already know how to lose weight, then why didn't I, why, why haven't I done it? I, hadn't, I never got down to my goal weight. I never got all the money I wanted, et cetera. Oh, now you're just being stubborn because you know how to do it. You've done it. You just are unwilling to do it now. And you want to set goals, not for the results, but for growth. So you want to meditate, not to get good at meditation. Right. I know that sounds weird because I'm, I'm a world-class surgeon. And I will tell you that trying to meditate is the hardest thing I've ever done. I'm like, and I've been meditating since 2000 and, 11 and I'm no good at it. Most of the time I'm horrible, but why do you keep doing it? 
I heard this one time. It said, if you can meditate, let's say you sit there for 10 minutes trying to meditate. And nine minutes and 50 seconds of that, you are thinking about stuff. You're worried about the project. You're worried about the deadline. Um, this, this monk said, but that's a 10 second that those 10 seconds that you were able to concentrate and you blocked out the world. That's the best gift you've given yourself for that day, those 10 seconds. And even though it took you 10 minutes to get there, you might not have ever gotten there again, you, you know, without actually trying the meditation. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So you keep going because for these little five second, 10 seconds, one minute of total relaxation and you're blissed out, that could be all the difference in whether or not you have a good day or a bad day. That could be all the difference whether or not you nail the presentation or you freeze up, you nail the interview or you just blabber like an idiot. You know, you say the right, that you make the right decision, you know? I mean, it sounds weird to say, but if you gave yourself uh, 30 seconds of a clear meditation, you might make a whole different decision. You might finally see the guy at the end of the bar. You recognize that he has more tattoos than he has teeth. This is what we call the, the teeth to tattoo ratio. If he has more tattoos than teeth, you probably don't want to get with him. You probably don't want to start up a conversation. You probably don't want to accept his drink offer. <laughs> The tattoos to teeth ratio. Uh, and it's it's a universal law. It's held up every single time. If they have more tattoos than teeth, I would go for a pass on that one. And Sally is totally right. There are guided meditations. You can YouTube it, et cetera, et cetera. How long did it take for the buzzing to go away? Whoever said it went away? Man? Sometimes it's still there. Yeah. So you just have to keep working on it and give yourself that gift. So how are we going to have a great day is today's video. We're almost done, believe it or not. And yesterday I talked about positive affirmations. Hit the share button, by the way, if you uh, get some people in here. We're still lagging behind the 100 we normally have. Um, tag somebody. Get them going. We're almost done. I want to give you this awesome tip, okay? Sonia says, I've never had gastric bypass surgery, but I've been on a journey of weight up and down. I just dumped upon your doctor. I'm so glad I did. Awesome, Sonia. I would let it go. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I would pass on the old sailor too. You know, um, so yesterday I talked about positive affirmations and we're going to do a video. We're going to do a talk later about the power of I am, which is one of Joel Osteen's, it's probably Joel Osteen's best lecture sermon, the power of I am. It's the one that really turned him on to the mainstream that really turned him up to Oprah, etc. So we do positive affirmations. Most days, if I'm in town, I take my daughter, Mason, my uh, seven year old, who's in second grade, I take her to school. And I've been driving her to school, I mean, since pre K was was COVID, but we've been doing positive affirmations since she was five years old. She's seven now. And every day, I teach you the positive affirmations. I say, we always start with, I am happy. And she goes, I am happy. And you know, when you start with kids, they're kind of embarrassed. They don't know what to think. They kind of whisper it. And I said, no, mofo. You got to put some energy into it. Like, I am happy. So we're driving down. And uh, this morning we took a Jeep, for example. My Jeep, I take off the doors and it's totally wide open, right? I'm happy. We're driving down the road. And Mason has learned to love sitting in the front seat. It scares her. She likes it. She's like, dangerous, daddy. It's dangerous. And uh, she goes, I am happy. Can you imagine? Like, you know, there are people out there walking their dogs and some kids are walking to school and and the skinny little Asian and, and a little kid is driving by you in an opened up Jeep and they're yelling, I am happy. That's number one. I am healthy is number two. We always start off those two the same. I am happy and I am healthy. Now, comment, what would the world be like if everybody started off the day? I am happy. I am healthy. Not I'm stressed out. Not I'm anxious. Not I'm so busy. 
Oh, fucking traffic. Oh, it's weather. I'm so cold. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I did not sleep well. See what I'm saying? Yep, yep. The buzzing, baby. And um, so we go, I am happy. I am healthy. And then from there we go to whatever, you know, I am prosperous. She goes, I am prosperous. And she goes, what does that mean? <laughs> and I said, it means you have a lot of everything to give away. And she goes, I am prosperous. I said, I am abundant. She goes, I am abundant. What does that mean? It means you have a lot. She goes, oh, I'm abundant. And she's like, I have a lot of money, don't I, Dad? She has like a couple hundred bucks in her biggie bank. She thinks that's a lot of money. And she goes, I have more money than mom, don't I? I said, well, some days you do, yeah. <laughs> I am abundant. And then the other thing about kids is it's important to teach them, I try hard. It's more important to tell your kids that they try hard than that they are smart. Studies have shown this. Why? Because if you tell a kid they're smart, they do good on the test one time, and they get a good grade on the test, and they told they're smart, and they think that the next test, even though it's harder, they don't have to study as hard. But if you tell a kid, I, you tried hard, you got an A on the test because you tried hard, way, way to try hard, way to try hard, they know that the key to getting a good grade or scoring a touchdown or kicking the soccer ball is to try hard. And so the next test, they try hard. And the next test, they try hard versus the I'm smart kid who just assumes everything's going to be easy and it's going to be, and you know, they don't have to work as hard because they're smarter than the average kids. They have, this has borne out in tests over and over and over again. Okay. Wonderful day. So it's more important that you teach your kids that they try hard. And then, um, you know, I try hard. She goes, I try hard. I said, I try really hard. I try really hard. I never give up. I never give up. I love to fail. She goes, I love to fail. It's that's how I succeed. And she goes, that's how I succeed. <laughs> and then we always end it. We can go forever. We can keep going, but eventually we end it and we end it with this. My name is Mason. So I want you to go. My name is Betty. My name is Thelma. My name is Tess. My name is Gonzo. My name is Melissa. My name is Dr. V. And she goes, and he, and she says, my name is Mason and I can do anything. She goes, I can do anything. And we're fucking yelling this, driving down the road in our Jeep. And everyone's looking like, looking at us drive by. I can do anything. If you want to, you can add MoFo, right? So we parked the Jeep and we get out and we, we walk to, uh, we walk to where she goes inside the school. And this is where all the parents drop them off, et cetera, you know, and we walk up and I, and I kneel down in front of her. She's actually taller than me now. So when I kneel down, I kneel down and here's Mason's key to how to have a good day. Okay. Number one, how to have a good day. You have to learn this, okay? Ask her, Mason, what kind of day are you going to have? So I'm kneeling down in front of her and I say, Mason, what kind of day are you going to have? And she says, a great day. A great day. Okay. Not a so-so day. Not an okay day. Daddy, I'm going to have a great day. So you declare to the universe that you're going to have a great day. And nobody's going to fucking ruin my day. It's my one day. Tomorrow might not come. I'm going to have a great day. So number three. How okay. I want you to answer this question. Say to her, how do you have a great day? How do you have a great day? I want you to put the answer 
in the comment section and I will pause. I will edit out the pause on YouTube because I want you to answer. How do you have a great day? And what you need to understand is I did not teach her this. She came up with this answer herself, my seven-year-old. Uh, she was six at the time. We started this last year. What kind of day are you going to have, Mason? A great day. And how do you have a great day? What do you think she says? She says this. I want you to write this down. I see your answers. Thelma says, by choosing, try hard and do your best. Nice. Believe you will. Focusing on today. Helping someone else. So Mason says, but Mason, how do you have a great day? Here's her answer. And it blew my mind the first time she said it. She came up with this herself. She said, work hard, stay strong, and be kind. I said, motherfucker, what the heck is that? Work hard, stay strong, and be kind. And then I say, that's right. That's excellent AF. All right, Mason, how do you have a great day? Work hard, stay strong, and be kind. Now, what would the world be like if everybody said, to have a great day, I have to work hard, I have to stay strong, and I have to be kind. And then I say, Mason, bitch. And I got to remind you, she came up with these herself. I did not tell her the answers. And I said, Mason, which one is most important? And my daughter says, which one do you think is most important? My daughter says, be kind. And I said, that's right. When you're get Wayne Dyer says, when given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. When I heard him say that, it changed my life. I was going through my struggles that I've talked about the other day, my bankruptcy and hurricane and being away from my family, taking the job in Little Town, Illinois. And I was listening to personal development all day long. I just nonstop. Everything I was doing, it was always a personal development. It was a Jim Rohn video, Les Brown video, Tony Robbins video, Wayne Dyer video. And Wayne Dyer says, when given the choice between being right and being kind, choose your kind, choose kind. Remember, as a bariatric surgeon, I tested out. I've taken more exams than I can remember. I mean, just not only just to graduate middle school and high school, but to get into college and then all the college exams, to get into med school, all the medical school exams. And you know, all the exams during residency, you guys realize we take exams during residency too, to test ourselves, our knowledge base versus other surgeons, other residents. So I've taken a lot of exams. I've gotten a lot of A's in my life. And so I'm always right most of the time. And so for the first half of my life, I was so focused on being right, on being right, and telling other people how right I was and making sure that they understood that I was right. But let me ask you this. If I am right, if you have to be right, then the other person has to be what? In order for you to be right, the other person has to be wrong. Now, tell me, who in this world likes to be wrong? No one. No one wants to be told they're wrong. See, we don't understand this. This, this affects our parenting, how you talk to your teenagers, how you talk to your coworkers how you talk to your boss. No one wants to be told they are wrong. No one thinks they're wrong. Their egos will not let them be wrong. So Wayne Dyer said, when given the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. 
And I said to my daughter, how are you going to have a great day? She said, work hard, stay strong, and be kind. And I said, which one's the most important? And out of her own mouth, she says, be kind. And I said, oh, my God, you are my child. You sprung from my loins, you know, sprung from my loins. It's amazing. So then I said, this year, I added a new one. I added a new one. I said, uh, go be a leader. Last year, or was it kindergarten? It was kindergarten, actually. Kindergarten, two years ago. She was identified as gifted and talented after her kindergarten year. So last year was her first year doing GT, and she's in STEM classes and stuff. And once you get identified, um, you don't have to reapply and stuff like that. She, she did get on her exam, and she's gifted and talented, right? So this year, I said to her, you know, she's talking about leadership. And I said, um, I said, Mason, go be a leader. She says, okay. And I said, stop. What does it mean to be a leader? What does it mean to be a leader? So I want you to pause the video. I want you to think about it. I want you to put some comments. What does it mean to be a leader? You know, if you ask me that, I would say like, set a good example. Uh, say what you mean, mean what you say, do what you're going to say, show up on time. Right? That's a good one, Bernard. Uh, this is, there's a whole thing about servant leaders now, serve others, help others succeed. That's a nice one. Uh, what does Stacy say? Be first part picker, serve others, right? What does it mean to be a leader? Serve others, right? So Mason says, leader. When you hear this, this is going to be crazy. I said, Mason, what does it mean to be a leader? And Mason says, my Wi-Fi is slow. Mason says, leader means be in control of yourself. Leader means be in control of yourself. And I went, holy shit. Holy shit. That's it. I mean, what else is there to teach you? What? I mean, like, that is so good. So very good. Very profound. Right, Dana? Good leaders are in control of themselves. That's it crazy amazing and that's all you need to know how to have a great day positive affirmations with energy behind it i am healthy i am happy i'm abundant i try hard i love to fail that's how i succeed i never quit i love to learn i love math i love science you know what kind of day are you gonna have? Declare the day. I'm gonna have a great day. How do you have a great day, Mason? Work hard, stay strong, and be kind. Which one's most important? Be kind. That's right. What's it mean to be a leader? Leader means being in control of yourself. Wow. Man, what if we taught this to all of our kids? What if we taught this to adults? I mean, we would be such a better country, such a better world, everything, right? All right, day 12. That's how you have a great day. If you found value in this, please hit the share button. Please tag somebody. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, same time, same bat channel. I'm working on editing these down, putting them up as a series, right? You do. Isn't that crazy? Yes, you do. He's great.
Yes. Love y'all very much. Anita, Sarah Elizabeth, have an amazing day. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys.